and start out by doing a magic trick and ask you how this uh, little magic trick works. It's a scientific principle that this trick is based on. So let me uh, balance this wood. Okay, and let me step off carefully. All right. <clears throat> oh. Woo. Help me out, help me out. Little lower pitch. can tell me how that works. The science, that made my ears ring. The science behind that one, you guys here in Science Center, just say yes. The sound waves may uh, move the piece of wood that knock it over. Give a round of applause if you think that's on the right track. Okay, who can be a little bit more explicit about this? Who can say a little bit more? Yes, stand up nice and loudly. Say what? It's what? Cotton thread. Cotton thread. <laughs> <laughs> it is not cotton thread, but that's a uh, guy doesn't trust me all the time. So, uh, sound waves, cotton thread. Who else uh, has an idea on how that works? Yes. Center of gravity, honey. S center of gravity. We're getting on to the right idea. Yes. The sound might have broken the surface tension. The surface tension broke. This is just plexi. But, that, but that's a great idea. You know what? That's part of what being a scientist is. Part of being a scientist is seeing different phenomena and coming up with lots of different hypotheses of how things work. But I told you up front that I was a magician, so let me tell you how this works. Usually people think it has to do with sound. Nothing to do with sound, nothing to do with uh, cotton threads, although that's not a bad idea. Nothing to do with surface tension. This is a magic trick. I went and I cut the thing open. I put in a tube. I filled it about halfway up with oil, like molasses, thick oil. Glued the thing back together, and so the oil sits down over there. When I tilt it, the oil starts moving. And when the oil moves far enough over there, it falls off. How many people follow what I'm talking about? Okay. It's low, it's sleazy, but I do it anyway. I don't care. But you know what? That is just the qualitative explanation. Sir Isaac Newton looked at these kinds of things and came up with a quantitative explanation for that. And I want to explain how this works using Chinese devil sticks. Chinese devil sticks, boom, 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 all right, here we go. Chinese devil sticks are based on the same thing which is called the center of gravity. I have marked the center of gravity with that black tape, and it is basically the balance point of those devil sticks. So, here's what Isaac Newton used his imagination. He said that um, instead of all of the mass of the devil stick being distributed like that, supposing you imagine all of the mass is right there in the center. The way I like to think about it is that there's a rope connected to that black piece of tape and gravity pulls straight down on the rope. That's my mental image. Well, it doesn't do any good if you can't make some predictions with that mental image. 
And one of the predictions that he made was that if the center of gravity was in between the base of support, it would be stable. And if it were out over here, the rope would pull it over. Follow what I'm saying? Okay. So watch this. I am going to start rolling the devil sticks in the, towards the orange. And everybody knows that eventually it'll fall over, but Isaac Newton was able to figure out exactly when it would fall over, and that's exactly when the center of gravity gets past that stick. That's exactly when it falls over. That's why he was a genius, because he was thinking about this uh, quantitatively. So, how does that uh, help you with devil sticks? I'm gonna give you a couple of lessons in how to do the devil sticks. And here is lesson number one, and it's all based on center of gravity. I'm going to put one stick above and one stick below, so the devil stick is sort of locked in place. If you imagine that the center of gravity is pulling down over there, it's easy to see why it's locked in place. So I can flip it over and it'll lock in place. And so lesson number one is to go back and forth like this. You're in complete control of this devil stick and center of gravity. Okay, lesson number two is I'm going to separate the sticks and now I am not in complete control of the center of gravity, excuse me, of the devil stick, because if I were just to stop, it would fall and then I have to drop down and catch it before it hits the ground. So watch that. Do you see what I mean? It's, I can't just stop as I could before. And so how do I actually control things because sometimes I can go quickly and sometimes slowly and in order to figure that out I want to show you a series of experiments to figure out what's going on. So my first experiment I'm going to toss the devil stick in the air and I'm going to toss it right at the center of gravity and I want you to watch and see what the motion of the stick is as it goes in the air straight up, straight down, but it doesn't flip at all. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna flip it up on the R inside, which is about two or three centimeters away from the center of gravity, and watch the motion of the stick. It goes up, but it also spins because there's that torque that I was applying to it. Now, I'm going to go and uh, do it pretty far away from the center of gravity and it spins much more quickly. And so just by understanding how center of gravity works, I can go and make it go slowly or quickly by going far away from the center of gravity or close to the center of gravity. So that allows you to do all these cool tricks like this. But how do you follow where the stick is in the air when it's doing all of that spinning? And that's another place that the center of gravity comes into play. And that is because Isaac Newton realized that the object will spin around its center of gravity. Now, what I'm going to do right now is add two motions together. A lot of people know that you can add certain things like numbers but they didn't know that you can add motions. And so the two motions I'm gonna add are up and down motion of the center of gravity plus spinning around the center of gravity. Those are the two motions. And when you watch it that way, I'll do it a couple of times so you can see it. Watch how the center of gravity goes straight up and down. I'll do it for you guys. And the stick goes around the center of gravity. Let me do it for you guys. proving that gravity is actually in operation over here. But you can see how that works. And so it's really the sum of two motions, which is very cool. That was another reason why he was such a good scientist. He was able to take complex things and break them down in the small. How many people still with me with following all this kind of stuff? All right, hang on. So what good is a theory if all that it does is explain devil sticks? You have to be able to extend it to some other things. And I've got a couple more. Here is a different object. Where would the center of gravity of this object be? 
in the center over there. So if my hypothesis is right, the center should go up and down. The thing spin around the center like that. Let's watch it. Woo! Doesn't do that. No surprise here at Aztec. Because why doesn't it do that? It's the black part over there is weighted differently. So does that mean that Isaac Newton was wrong? Well, maybe that's not where the center of gravity is. How do you find the center of gravity? You do that by letting it balance. So when I balance it on the stick, the center of gravity is somewhere directly below it, somewhere on that line, I don't know where. But I'll turn it to another position, it's somewhere on that line, I don't know where. I'll move it to another position, somewhere on that line. But I keep on moving it around and seeing where all of those lines intersect, I can see that the center of gravity is right about there. So let me show you. Here I have marked the center of gravity in gold. And so watch when I fl throw it up in the air. Actually, I can show you that because no matter where I balance it, the gold will be right below it. So I'll do this once or twice. Can you see how the center of gravity goes straight up and down and it moves around? Let me do it for you guys, for you guys over there. And so what is so cool is that even a crazy, what looks like a, a crazy motion can be explained as the sum of two simple motions and that is really the power of understanding these scientific things. Well, Newton had a large imagination. It's not only things like this that spin around their center of gravity. I want to show you two more. One of them is this. This is a model of the Earth and the Moon. Now, the Earth and the Moon are to the right scale with each other. Uh, the Moon is about one-fourth the diameter of the Earth, but they're not at the right distance. The actual distance, if the Earth were here at this scale, the Moon would be where it says uh, Aztec Resource Center, 30 of those uh, diameters away. And the balance point is about a thousand miles below the surface of the Earth. Now you guys know that the real Earth and the real Moon do not hang in outer space from some big black stick. So, how many of you knew that? <laughs> oh, actually not that many knew that, okay. So I want you to imagine instead a line, or a line segment I should say, that goes between the Earth and the Moon, and that is the actual motion. They tell you in school that the Moon goes around the Earth, not true. The Moon and the Earth go around their common center of gravity. And you know, they also tell you in school that uh, the Earth goes around the sun. Also not true, right now I'm gonna play the part of the sun. Okay, here we go. What the real situation is, is that the Earth and moon center of gravity, it's that center of gravity that goes around the sun. So this is like a more accurate description of the solar system. But you know, I wanted to do one more thing and really put this to the test. How many of you ever seen that thing where you put water in a cup and you like spin the cup around like that and it stays in because of centrifugal force? Okay. Well, here's something that's a little bit different than that. I have put a lot of weight in here. I put in like a lead shot, BBs. So this is pretty heavy. And when this is filled with water, that yellow tape is where the center of gravity is. Not yet, but once I put the water in. So that if Newton is right, it ought to spin around the center of gravity and the water ought to stay in this uh, thing. So this is a little experiment that I want to do. The reason why I say it's an experiment is I don't always catch it. <laughs> okay, all of a sudden, the people in the front row are not feeling too good about this. But I'm gonna give it a shot, and I have been practicing this in the hotel room. I'm gonna have to tip the maid pretty big on this trip. 
But if I do it, I'm hoping for a big round of applause. If, it's a big if. And I think I have a little bit too much water. Okay, a little bit of warm up over here, just to see that it stays in. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm gonna try to do. What I'm gonna try to do is spin it around, give it a toss, let it go, give it a full flip in the air, catch it again, and keep the water in. If I do this one, uh, even I'm gonna be surprised. Okay, drum roll, <laughs> drum roll. <laughs> okay, here we go. A little warm. Oh, keep that drum roll going. I need the uh, encouragement. And here we go. And there you have it. Center of gravity. <laughs>